Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find missing observations. I just want to quickly mention that I've actually already solved this problem before I even made a video for it. And I think that was actually almost three years ago. But anyways, I'll solve it again today. But in the future, if I don't solve a problem, it's worth just searching for it to see if I did it in the past. So very long problem description. I'll try to make it more simple for you. So the idea is we have a dice. This is kind of my bad drawing of it, but it's six sided. So it'll have a one on one side, a two and then a three and all the way up to six. So one through six. And and there were a bunch of rolls for those dices. So I guess going through this example here, there were six total rolls. How do I know there were that many? Well, because they give us a parameter rolls that tells us four of them and they gave us the value of each one. So that's three for the first and then two, four, three. And they also tell us here n equals two. So there were two more rolls done. We just don't know the value of those rolls. So that's how I know that in total there are six rows, um, rolls, sorry. But our objective here is to guess what these rolls could have been, not necessarily what they were, because there could be multiple correct answers. We just need to return a single one. So the question is, how can we do that? It's not quite as complicated as it might seem at first. Let me break it down for you. First of all, you pretty much have to know what an average is. By average, I mean the mean average. That's basically taking a bunch of values and then dividing them. So one thing you must know, you must recognize that if we were to sum all of these values, so whatever that sum happened to be, and then you divide it by this, let's call this M, that's uh, the number of rolls we're given, and N, the number of rolls we're trying to guess. If you divide that by the total number of rows, this sum is all of this, remember? This has to be less than or equal to six and greater than or equal to one. The reason that this is so important is that they actually give us another parameter called the mean. It is going to be this value. It literally is that value. So they actually helped us out because we would not be able to calculate this without the missing values. It's impossible. So they helped us out. They gave us this value. In this example, the value was four. So knowing that the average of all of these is four, what are some realistic guesses that we could make here? So now it's logical to want to know, well, what is the sum of all of these values? We already know what M and M are. So what's the total sum? Well, that's pretty easy to calculate, isn't it? Just take M plus N multiply it by the mean because they already gave us the sum. So, you know, multiply both sides. But uh, yeah, basically just take this, multiply it by that. This is how many rolls there were. This is the average for each roll. So multiplying them will give us the total. In this example, it is going to be 24. So it's going to be the mean was four multiplied by the total number of rolls, six. So this is the total sum. OK, now it seems pretty logical to take this sum and subtract it from this so that we know, well, what's the total sum of the missing remaining values? OK, do that and you'll get this. All of these, I believe, are 12. So we get 24 minus 12 and now we are left with 12. So this is the missing sum. It doesn't tell us an individual role, but just by looking at this, we humans can tell that if it's 12, the only possible values that these could have been are going to be six and six. OK, but how do we do this algorithmically? Because it's not always going to be this simple. So now that we've gone through all of these like six sided die, all this math, all this blah, 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 we've reduced this to now distributing this 12 among n different slots. So now we've changed the problem. This is very similar. I think, at least in my opinion, it reminds me of like the pigeonhole principle, the pigeonhole problem. So that's what I'm going to be discussing now to show you how to solve this optimally. Let's suppose that the missing sum was 10 and we have three dice rolls to fill. Well, OK, let's just try to be greedy. That always works out for us, right? Let's try to just add the max amount that we can. We have 10 here, so the max we could add here, remember each dice is one through six, so that's gonna be six. Now we have four remaining. Okay, just be greedy, add it all over here, four. Now we have zero remaining. Okay, just be greedy, add the zero over here. Don't you see a problem with this approach? How could a dice roll be zero? It can't. There is another possible problem. Suppose the missing sum was 19. Let's do the same thing, six here. Okay, six here. 
and then a six over here. Well, that's the max we could have possibly done, but we're still left with a missing sum of one. We don't have any more dice rolls. So there's two steps to this. One is going to be the validation that we do before just with the missing sum value. And then the second step is going to be the actual like simulation. It's going to be similar to a greedy approach, but it's going to rely a little bit on like the pigeonhole principle thing I was talking about a second ago. So the first thing we're going to do with this sum, we can tell that this sum is valid or invalid just by taking this. Let's say we divide this by three. It has to be less than or equal to six. It has to. It also has to be greater than or equal to one. Suppose we had a missing sum of two and we have three slots to fill. Well, we you can't really do it. Like one of them is going to be a zero no matter what. So again, the average has to be greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to six. Okay, now step two. This is the more interesting part. It's going to be somewhat greedy, but the only problem is we kind of saw it earlier. If we add like as much as we can here and then as much as we can, eventually we run out. You don't want to blow your load too quickly. So let's make sure that we at least no matter how greedy we are, let's at least make sure we have the bare minimum for the rest of the slots to make this more interesting. Let me add a fourth slot. So let's just always make sure we have at least one for the remaining. So we're going to do this starting with 10. We're going to add six here. Now we have four remaining. And so now you might again think to be greedy, just add that four. No, we have to make sure that whatever value we have, that when we're left over with X, that X is enough to fill these slots. What's the minimum value that would be enough to fill these? Well, there's two slots, so that value has to be two. What I'm saying is add the maximum value you can in each spot. Just make sure you have enough for the remaining spots. So in this case, it's a very simple formula. If I were you, I would try to write it out on pen and paper before I do. But if you can't, this is what it is. It's going to be the minimum of six or the current missing sum. I'll just call that sum for short minus while we're iterating through this, like the code and is going to be this, like the total number of slots we have here. So here I'm going to do sum minus and and I'm going to do a plus one. This plus one is just for the fact of this. We just want to make sure that uh, I guess I'll just give you an example of this formula. When this is four, this calculation is going to become a four minus these three plus one. So this calculation will tell us the biggest value we can put here. Coincidentally, this is two and this length is also two this time. But this calculation will tell us the biggest value that you can put here such that we at least have one remaining here and one remaining here. Just a dry run through this one last time, maybe with a different example. Let's call this 13. Let's do that calculation. What's the minimum value we can put here? It's either going to be six or it's going to be the sum 13 minus four plus one. So that's a 10. So the biggest value we can put here is 10. And then we'd have one remaining in all of these other spots. But we know that no dice can be a 10. So we put six instead, the minimum of 10 and six, the minimum of these two. So we put a six here and I'll quickly uh, go through the rest of this. So now we have a seven. So what's the biggest value we can put here? I believe it's going to be a five. And then we put a one here and then a one here. Now you don't have to do it this way. There's no particular reason you have to put the biggest value this is just one valid answer, but I believe the time complexity is going to be M plus N. One, because we need to fill the remaining slots and also we need to compute the sum of the input rolls array. Space complexity, I believe it's constant if you don't actually include these like output values. So now let's code it up. So I'll try to keep this code pretty readable. Let's get M. That is going to be the length of that rolls parameter. Next, let's get the total sum of everything um, among rolls, which again, we can compute by taking the mean, multiplying it by the total number of rolls. That's going to be M plus N. And then once we have the total sum, it's pretty easy to compute the missing sum that we're looking for just by taking the total sum and subtracting from it the rolls sum, which is just sum of that 
uh, input array. Now, remember, the first thing we want to do is that validation step with the missing sum. So we want to make sure that taking this, dividing it by six, it's going to be greater than, or dividing it by n, sorry, is going to be greater than or equal to six. In this if statement, basically, I'm going to return early. I'm going to say that there isn't a possible solution. So we return an empty array. So for the equality here, I actually don't need that. If this is greater, if it's strictly greater than six, that's when we would return early. Um, and then here, we'll do the opposite. If the missing sum, and this time we actually don't need to divide it because if it's less than n, n is the number of missing slots. So we need at least one for each of those. So this works and this kind of tells me that we can actually change this up. We can multiply this side by n and multiply this side by n. And then it's a little bit cleaner to have multiplication rather than division. So I prefer this, though it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but now let's get into the result. Let's um, initialize it here and then return it here. But let's actually do the com computation somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna do this by saying while n. The reason I'm using a while loop rather than a for loop is because we're going to be updating the n variable. It tells us the number of missing slots. So we're going to be decrementing it by one each time. But to get the actual dice in the current position, remember we just take the minimum of six as well as the missing sum minus n plus one. Then we can add it to the result and don't forget to update the missing sum by subtracting the dice from it. So we need to keep this updated and we need to keep n updated. Alternatively, for the condition, you actually probably could have just said while the missing sum is non-zero, it'll probably work the same in both cases, but either way, let me give this a run. As you can see, it works. It's pretty efficient, I promise you. Leak code run times are pretty random. This is about as efficient as you can get, at least I think in terms of big O time and space, because as you can see, we're not doing anything other than iterating over N and technically iterating over the rules by taking the sum of it. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.